Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here at beautiful Lake Washington on what I would consider a beautiful Seattle day with the Seattle sun shining. <laughs> it's actually been pretty cool because it's nice and cool. It's been a, a stark contrast from like the blazing heat that I came from. So I'm actually quite pleasant. Uh, but anyways, we're here checking out the Aurora Mid Drive from Evelo. I'd love to tell you all about it. Uh, so as you can see, the Evelo Aurora is kind of like your full feature bike. It's got a, a lot of the fixings that you're accustomed to when you're looking for, you know, like a full bike. It's not like their folding bike model, but it is one of, I guess, what you would call like one of their easier bikes to get into uh, as far as the step through, but also in price. They do a lot to kind of keep the price at something pretty reasonable. Um, but like I said, it does have all the cool features going on. You have the, the mid-mounted battery pack, you got a shock up front, a rack. It, this is compatible with fenders. Um, they're an added accessory, we don't have them now, but this is kind of like your cruiser bike, kind of like a city bike as well, that you can equip it with such. Because it doesn't have fenders on it from the get-go, but it does have lights on it uh, in combination with this rack that's really solid molded to the frame. Um, so you can have a, a lot of a lot of fun on a bike like this. Uh, it's also got a lot going on for comfort, you know, kind of like the wide tires, the handlebars. We'll kind of talk about these nuts and bolts uh, in more detail, but the main theme is is comfort. Is that right, John? John, That's by correct. the way, is from Evelo. So I guess put her there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so the main function is, is comfort, something with an upright riding position, easy on off access. Uh, one thing about electric bikes is that uh, they all tend to be about double the weight of a conventional bike. So even if you're used to getting a leg over on a regular bike, it does make it quite a bit easier to get on and off with a step through frame. Great. So let's go ahead and jump into the mechanical specifications. We'll go ahead and start up at the front of the bike. Uh, so I did mention the comfort aspect and then mention the tires. So the tires actually have a lot to do with it. These tires are on other uh, Evelo bikes and you also get them on this bike, which has the Kevlar strip on the inside to kind of prevent flats from happening. Uh, but they're pretty darn wide. These are a 26 inch by three inch wide tire and it's actually on a uh, custom rim. So this rim is actually pretty wide, about 45 millimeters wide to handle that tire. Gives it a really nice shape. Uh, in the front, you have a 13 gauge spoke, 100 millimeter hub spacing, and a through axle up on the front for some rigidity. Also for a comfort feature, you have a 100 millimeter travel uh, front suspension. Uh, this is a spring suspension, um, which does have the lockout and a preload adjustment. And another cool thing is that you have the front light attached to uh, the crown of the fork here. Um, it does have a plastic mount on there, which I'm told from Evelo is actually a, an improvement from the previous mount, uh, that this one is easier to service. Correct, and it also has a unique quick connect on here, so that if for some reason you do need to replace the light, it gets banged up in an accident or just storing the bike, just takes a second to disconnect this, and then one bolt, easy to replace. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite, I mean, it might seem like a small thing, but it's one of my favorite things about this bike, and it's kind of emblematic about the company in general is that, uh, like John was saying, this quick disconnect for the light uh, makes it really easy to replace this light. Phillips screwdriver, unplug that with your bare hands, off you go. I mean, it's super easy. And that light actually is something that breaks on a lot of bikes, truth be told. Um, when someone is throwing it in and out of a, a truck, you know, carelessly, or perhaps packing it into an RV, this little guy is, it's, it's one of the things you don't consider when you're doing that, so I can understand why. But Evelo's gone the extra mile to make it easier to replace. And that's, like I said, it's kind of emblematic of the company because um, it's an American company making bikes for, you know, the American market. And they understand these things. They can, act, you can actually call these guys up. They're here in Seattle if you have a service question or something, which is a really nice thing that, that they have that some other bike companies don't. You know, some of them go price only and there's compromises there. But with Evelo, you actually get quite a bit of benefit in that realm. Um, so continuing on with the mechanical specifications, we talked about the fork a little bit. Um, up on the headset, not too much to talk about there. Inch and an eighth, non-tapered. So the stem is actually pretty darn cool as well. Another one of the custom things that Evelo has. Um, they actually have a name for this stem. It's really high. If you, if you measure it from level, it's about 65 degrees going up. And that was actually a, a change that they had made from adjustable stems on the other bikes. Yeah, that's correct. It's uh, We call it the Evelo Stargazer, and it basically puts you slightly higher than an adjustable stem on the highest setting. Because what we found is that most customers tend to take the adjustable stems and put them in the most upright position. 
which is great, but this offers a lighter, more rigid option than an adjustable stem put all the way up. It's less maintenance, you don't have to worry about the bolts coming loose, easier to install, so it's a win all the way around. Yeah, that's really awesome. It, you know, it's small little details like this that really make or break a bicycle. And in this case, it, it does make the bicycle really comfortable. It brings up the handlebars really high. You can kind of see from, from this angle. The seat is a little high for myself because I've got 34 inch inseam. Um, the seat's a tiny bit high, but you see the handlebars are really high. And doing so puts you in a much more natural riding position. You're more sitting the way that you would on, on a chair instead of hunched over you know, trying to throw all of your weight into the front the way that you would for a mountain bike or so. So this actually has a lot to do with it. As well, the handlebars have a little bit of a sweep to them. They kind of come back to meet you so that, you, again, you don't have to throw your weight forward. Uh, the grips on this bike are a flat rubber um, with a locking mechanism. So they're not gonna shift around a whole lot um, when you're putting a tight grip on there, but they don't have quite that ergonomic feel. So that's one of the things that is different between this and some of the other bikes on the Evelo lineup. Um, on the controls, you do have a nice big four finger lever um, for the mechanical disc brakes. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the rear of the bike. Um, and it does have uh, a motor inhibitor as well. Uh, we talked about the quick disconnect for the light, but that also exists for all of the electrical controls up on the front. So if there is, again, a service need uh, that's required, you can totally just gain access to these small little nuts or bolts, keep this thing on, and then boom, you can replace it and off you go. Uh, so that's a really cool thing uh, about this bike in particular. Um, so we talked about the step through in a general sense, but it's not terribly high. I think this is about like 24 inches from the ground um, to get up to get your leg up and over there. So um, not really high. So that makes it easier to get on and off of the bike. You can also kind of step down, put your feet on the ground, really plant solid, and then jump back onto the seat again. This is a solid seat post. It could be a little bit more comfortable if you have a suspension on there, but luckily it's a 27.2 size uh, for the diameter of the seat post. Uh, itself so you can switch that out pretty easily if you wanted to go the extra mile for comfort but i will say that the saddle is actually quite impressive uh, so it doesn't look um, terribly amazing but it is like a gel filled saddle about six and a half inches wide for the footprint there um, and it's really good i've been bouncing around a little bit on this thing uh, as we've been riding and i've been impressed it's nice and soft you know it doesn't have a break-in period i suppose <laughs> i have seen that on some saddles uh, but this one's great from the get-go uh, so give this saddle a try you know before you commit to too much added accessories for it um, so the bike does have a rear rack that is welded onto the frame. So this is really solid. You see that's a nice big metal with a really nice weld point, um, both on the top and on the bottom. This rack itself doesn't have the specific like European pannier set, you know, that's like really, really thinny, thin metal. This one's kind of big. So a, a set that flops over the top or like a trunk bag, for example, the Evelo specific trunk bag over there, that's another added accessory, kind of like the fenders. That would totally work. But if you have a single-sided like European bag with a tiny hook, you might have to check it out. See if it'll work on this one because this is actually some pretty thick tubing. And of course that thick tubing does afford you to carry a greater capacity. John, do you know the capacity of what the rear rack can carry? 50 pounds. 50 pounds, okay. And the total bike itself can carry 350. 350 pounds, correct. Okay, so if you've, so if you've got a 300 pound rider, you can totally get a 50 pound bag of sand from for the kid's play set on this bike, which is, that's a lot of weight to carry for a bicycle like this. Um, but it can do so because of the electric system. We'll talk about that in a minute. I promise I won't get too far ahead of <laughs> where I'm going. Uh, in the back of the bike, this is the hub motor. Uh, this is where the magic happens. Uh, these are a nice, thick uh, 12 gauge spoke in the back. The brakes, uh, both front and back, are a 160 millimeter uh, disc. And these are Tektro Aries brakes, which have a mechanical disc brake. Um, for the caliper here. They actually work pretty good and I can tell you that with confidence because I came down some of these big hills <laughs> way over there and I was actually on the brakes uh, quite a bit. I'm not as familiar with the area. John has been taking these curves for many years so he's very confident but uh, I was a little more hesitant so I was on the brakes a little bit more uh, and uh, they work. One other thing to talk about in the back of the bike is the kickstand placement. Uh, so one very important thing for electricbikereview.com uh, is when the kickstand is mounted in the back of the bike, like so, um, it actually makes it easier to get a higher load on the back rack if you're loading it up with something heavy. Um, but aside from that, uh, the crank and the pedals when you're pushing the bike backwards will rotate. 
and if you're pushing the bike backwards say in a garage or so then this can come into contact if the kickstand were mounted in the middle and then the bike locks up and it seizes and it's kind of you know kind of scary sometimes it's not really a big deal you just got to lift up the bike push the pedal forward and you're good to go uh, but in this case that's not an issue at all because you can push the bike backwards to your heart's content and it's never going to seize up at all uh, which is kind of cool so let's go ahead and jump into the electric system. We're at the back of the bike, so we'll start here. This is the Bafang hub drive that's actually a 750 nominal 1000 peak output. So that's that's quite a bit. That's quite the hefty <laughs> quite the hefty motor that's powering the bike. I mean, the bike in total weighs in excess of 60 pounds. That's with the motor, the battery, and of course all the fixings that you see here. Uh, so this big motor is pushing it all and it does it. It does it very well. And that's powered by not only the controller that's built into this little spot right in here inside the frame. It's a 20 amp controller pushing out a lot of energy and that's accessed actually underneath the battery pack. So a quick note about the battery pack is that it's a 48 volt 11.6 amp hour battery uh, with Samsung cells uh, built right into this case. I'll have John go ahead and pull the keys um, off and we'll open it up and kind of show you a little bit about that. Uh, so it is uniquely keyed. Um, so you put the key in there, turn it open, and the battery actually slides out from the side rather than up. Uh, so that's kind of a nice convenience. And yeah, there it is, the battery. And underneath the battery is a little plate that you can take off with these four Phillips screws, and then that will give you access to the controller if, again, it needs servicing for some reason. Uh, it's a pretty strong controller. I mean, 20 amps and that thing can run and run. So, I mean, that's not gonna be common, but nonetheless, you know, it's there, it's easy. It's something that is much easier to service if need be. You could take it to a shop, or if you're fairly handy, you can jump at it yourself. Uh, so the battery does have this little um, bar graph on here to show you how much charge you have in a general sense. To get some more information, you turn on the display with the remote on the left side, and it will boot up with the eVelo logo, show you a few things. Your battery percentage is more specific up on the top right there. It says we have 78%. On uh, the very bottom, it shows you your pedal assist level and your speed in the very center. That's pretty much the most of what you're going to be doing with it, but it has a lot more features as well. Uh, this is kind of an automotive motif for a speedometer there that increases not only the number, but also the small graph as you go faster and faster. Zip. And of course it goes down. So you have a variable display on the bottom that when you press the information button on the remote will cycle through a few metrics, the odometer, the max speed, average speed, the range, calories, and a timer and trip set of course. Clock on the top left uh, that you can adjust through the settings menu. Settings menu, is that access through plus and minus at the same time? No, so to access the settings menu, you just do a quick double tap on the information button. Ah, okay. And then you can access it. There you go, and you can change you know, the clock, reset the trip, I'm sure, um, get some information on the bike production. <laughs> a lot more geeky stuff uh, that we could get into. Uh, so the pedal assist, like I said, is con is controlled up here with the plus or minus buttons. That controls how much pedal assist you get as you pedal. And that's based on a cadence sensor that's in the bottom bracket. If you just want to use it uh, like, a, like a motorcycle or a dirt bike, you can press this little trigger down here on the left thumb, and then that will expressly engage the motor. And the throttle is actually not tied to the level of assist, which is a really nice touch. So that means if you're in level one, the throttle has access to full power and it's not tied down uh, based on your assistance level. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one last thing that we should talk about on the electric side is actually the lights. So the lights you can turn on and off with the press of the light button, but there actually is a ambient light sensor that is built into the display right here in this little dot. Uh, so we actually had it working in the shop. Out here it's a little too bright, uh, even though there's cloud cover. Uh, but when it gets too dark, then the lights will actually turn on automatically uh, when that setting is accessed. Let's see if we can get it going. There we go. So there's a front light for an LED as well as the rear light. And the rear light actually has a brake light attached to it as well, which is really awesome. I'm excited for the brake lights they're because, yeah, they're kind of hard to see because it already has kind of like that, the tail light, if you want to call it that, or running light, and then the brake will kind of brighten it up a little bit. Um, again, it's kind of daylight and hopefully the camera kind of picks that up. Um, but the brake lights do come on whether you have the lights turned on or off. Either way, the brake lights will activate upon the brake lever being pulled. 
on the brakes. So that's really cool. I love that a lot because it's something that I wish existed years ago when I got into electric bikes. And back then they were like, they didn't work all that well. These ones work awesome. I've seen it with my own two eyes. So you guys can see that as well. Let's go ahead and jump on the bikes and go for a ride. So one thing I didn't really mention too much about this bike was that uh, it does weigh some more. You know, it's, it's not a lightweight bike, um, uh, excess of 60 pounds, but um, one thing that it actually comes an advantage for is when you're going higher speeds. Uh, so I was going down this very hill that we're going up, you know, and it's it's quite picturesque, you know, the uh, canopy cover and all. Um, I was going down this very hill or one just like it, maybe a street over or so. And the weight of the bike is actually pretty good for maneuverability. Uh, the tires are pretty wide, which is a good thing for comfort, but they do have kind of a unique riding profile. Um, I'm not as accustomed to it, but John, as you can see, John's over here on the bike on the Delta. He's very used to it. He says that, uh, you know, it's, it's a little uh, strange at first. You feel like you're about on the edge when you're making a tight turn. Uh, but don't be afraid, you know, that you can actually turn a little bit a little bit sharper and it'll take it. And I've kind of noticed that as I've started to pedal some more going up the hill. Um, so that's actually a pretty cool benefit about the bike. Now the hub drive, I should mention, it's it's got the power. <laughs> it really does. It's it. I mean, we're going up some of the steeper hills that I've done in recent history, and it's not a problem. I'm not even in full pedal assist, and we're just bouncing up this hill. It's not tough at all. So if you're concerned about maybe the you know the power output of the motor for some reason, don't. I mean, the mid-drive version definitely has some good balance. It's got some good power as well. But if that's one concern about deciding between this or a mid-drive or perhaps another bike, don't let the power get in the way because it's, it's a really nice bike for that. Oh, uh, so up on the controls we'll talk a little bit about the comfort again um you can see the natural position that my hands are in they're not at an angle that's twisted with my wrist or they're not like the really super um curved you know steering like a bus it's right in the sweet spot in the middle so i like that a lot <laughs> okay <laughs> kind of bouncing a little bit um on the tires uh one thing that uh, john pointed out is that the uh a little bit of the intimidation on steering might be caused from this bike not having a suspension. The other bikes that I was on, um, the Aries, um, those ones have a suspension. That kind of soaks up a little bit of the instability as you're riding over bumps and things, whereas this bike kind of feel it a little bit more. Uh, so I guess it really just depends on the terrain that you're going to be riding in. Okay, so we are on the Evelo Aurora hub drive. I've got it cranked up all the way to pedal assist level five. Let's go ahead and jump down this bike trail and show you what it does. Let's go ahead and full throttle up the hill. All right, that, that's fun. Yeah, this motor is no slouch, exactly as expected. It just really pumps it out. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video review of the Aurora hub drive uh, from eVelo. You can actually check out the full written review with all the specifications and all the measurements for this bike if you go to electricbikereview.com. You can actually go there and check out this bike and compare it with the other versions uh, from eVelo, uh, including the Aries, uh, hub drive, mid drive, the Delta, and a lot of other bikes that we've done reviews for. Uh, you can also go there and participate in the forums if you want to hang out in the community, ask a question, things like that. So thanks for watching guys, ride safe.